Hello, hi there, welcome back. All right, so the last video, um, we got stuck here, right? We're trying to programmatically add some elements to the list, and we did that, but then our delete wasn't working. And um, so if you look at what happened, I'm so silly. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're saying, call the delete function with what should be the value of i, but this is a string, this entire thing is a string and we pass an i here, so it's never get evaluated to one, two, or three. If you look here, we had to break, stop the string and add the computation here, you know, i plus one. So this is a string plus an integer, and JavaScript is smart enough to say, oh, I'm gonna turn that integer into a string and then append it. And so we need to do the same thing here. So we really need to say, I want to, so this is all a string, it's not code yet until we append it to the, uh, you know, the table um, body, then it's going to turn into some code but uh, that Java can execute. But it's the code we're building up in code. We're programmatically building up code, essentially, right? So we want to say, I want to call a meta call delete with what the current value of i is. Um, sorry. So there's the string. I'm going to break the string. This, um, this, this is a part of the string that I'm going to build up. And then passing to this delete to do is the current value of i plus again, and then I'm gonna restart the string. And so I need to do this here also. So there plus, and then plus a high. I totally missed that. And so now when we generate this, this is string now. If we actually look at print out what row is, you're gonna see that there's gonna be delete being passed the value of zero, and then the next one we pass the value of one, and depending on how many rows we have. Whereas before, it was actually passed an I, and when we call it, it was failing because we didn't see the error message, but the browser is essentially saying, I don't know what I is because we don't actually have inside the code that's going to be created for the table. We don't actually have I. I is something that we're using here in this piece of code. Okay. Remember, we're using code to generate code. So it's a little bit loopy and twisted and nested, but just trust me on this. So we needed to break it. And so that's the problem. The other problem we have is that here we're passing in i here but inside our function we call it index so this should be index and at first i thought i was making a mistake with the splice because splice says i want you to start at this offset which is at zero let's say the first one we want to delete and take one element away now you can say start at any offset and these are the number of elements to delete and we always going to want to delete one element because that's when we say delete we want to delete at that row, and then that row, the index, zero is going to be the first one. And if we pass in two or three, it's going to be at that offset. And so after we delete something, now our array has been adjusted, right? It's changed. There's something missing. So we just want to call update listing to have it, um, you know, uh, read, um, be updated. So we can refresh here. And... Let's say we say save and, you know, this thing and you say save it. That goes into our list and then we say get milk. And we put that as in progress and we save it. And then you see that's the second thing and we append it to the list. And let's do um, get bread and we put it as not in progress and we save it. Okay. And let's say we want to delete get milk. This is going to be index zero, index one. So when we call our function now, this is going to be called, this delete is going to be called with actual the value of one because we broke it. Uh, we said string append what the value of i is, which is, you know, put one here, append this one to this string, and then that string is what we're going to append here and turn it into code. But I know it's a lot, a lot. And so when we call delete now, we should see this alert box being call this is going to tell us our function is being called and then it's going to delete you know pass one which is index one and then one element and let's see that that work so you say delete and so our thing is being called and there we go um get milk was deleted all right and if we want to delete some tasks we can do this and that gets deleted and we could delete this all right so the entire list get deleted so let's remove this now uh what we should do at this point is um we should probably save our work, right? So we can say, you know, commit, work in progress still, delete item working. And so we close that and save that. All right, so this again is messed up. And so we refresh. 
the next thing we want to work on is edit. So we know it's, so edit is going to be called correctly now. We can put a alert message in here to test that. But we know it's going to be called correctly. You know, uh, we've fixed that. Uh, but um, so what happened when you pass edit? We really want is the one that we select. We want to take the description, put it back here. And we want um, the, remember, after we do a save, um, we, we clear this out. And we didn't get this one working. And I skipped that on purpose because I, I, when I address it here, we can see how to do it properly. And then we'll go back and fix that for, for save. All right, not to, I didn't want to do too many things at one time. So we will click edit. We want this description to show up there and this to be reset there. And now the question is, when we move something, when we say we want to edit something, should it come out of the list until we click save? Or should it stay in the list and then we click save it's get updated? So we could do it either way. But I think the more correct way is if we say edit something, we want it to show up here and still be in the list. If we click save, it get updated in the list. If we were deleted from the list, hoping the person would save it, if for some reason the person didn't save it, now it's gone from their list and that's not doesn't seem like correct behavior to me, right? If you don't understand the difference, the subtle difference there, don't worry too much. We'll just do it what I think is the right way and who is reasonable expectation for somebody working on wanting to edit something in their list. So when we say edit something in the list, we really want to do is find the one that they need to edit. So we want to find the to do that they want to edit, which is going to be equals to all the to dos, the one that this index that was passed in, right? So if they said I want to edit the zero one, well, we pull that out and we store it here. Just like how we were pulling it out here and getting the description, but we store it in this little variable. And we already know how to access these elements here. So we did that here and then set in their value to zero and then their you know, empty string. So why don't we just grab these guys and stick them on the bottom here. And yeah, except there we go. And so we know that how when you have the description and you want to set its value, we did this before. But when we set it to empty string, it cleared it out. We want to set it to to do that description. So we know that that's going to update the description. For the progress up here, we set it equals to zero, which should represent the very first um, thing here, not started. But that's now what we get. It didn't change when we when we save. It should if we had completed and we click save, it, it doesn't go back to not started. So there was something wrong with setting it just to value that zero and that's correct. And so the correct way of doing that was, uh, let me do, I do want the progress thing here. I want an element and then I say progress that element that selected index equals zero. That's really what we should do. Not really set, not that value, but selected index equals to zero. And let's see if that works. And so we're going to save here, go back here. We're going to refresh and we're going to add something. And then let's see if we do edit, what's going to happen. Oh, let's change this to completed. If it changes this to not started, then we know it's working. So we click edit and there we go. We get the rule we want. It took this, put it there and it changed this to not started and it left it in the list. If the user decided, so we should add a clear button here in case the user uh, decides that they don't want to do something with this thing, they can clear it. But we can do all that later. I can leave that as a to-do because you guys know how to clear something now. So we could add a clear button. So if it's populated and they, they, they say edit, for example, they can clear it out to, to do a new one so they don't have to like, you know, highlight everything and so on. But anyway, so let's move on. So now we know to do this. Let's go back and fix this. So the way to fix this is to say, selected uh, index, all right, equals thing. And so now let's save this and we can get the proper behavior. So if you refresh and okay, refresh here, and then we say, save this. And if you know, we put it in there and then we say save, it should put it back to not started. Ah, wait a second, what went wrong? Uh, what did we change? So progress element that selected index equals Thing progress that selected selected index equals zero. That should work. Let me see. Let me kind of work and save. See refresh. Put this there. Oh, we click save. Huh? Why is my progress selected index progress element? 
that's crazy. So progress element. <laughs> that selected index. All right, that's what I want to do. It's progress that selected element. Close. Um, and then I wasn't using the element. But trust me, if you use value on the element, it still wouldn't work either way. Okay, so you need to set it this way. Um, we can try it, and we'll see that it, it's not going to work. It's very weird. All right, so refresh, and then I'm going to change this to not start, and this will reset now to not start. Yep, and there you go, so it's working. All right, so now we have fixed that, but um, if if we click edit here, and it puts it up there, there, and then I change this to something, and I click save, like I want to update this to in progress now, for example, and I update the description for whatever reason, want to be more accurate or something or have some new information, I click save. It adds it as a new thing instead of, you know, updating the one that was thing. And that's because we didn't do anything here that says when we edit in something, you know, yeah, we put it in there, but we didn't do that though, anything that says, hey, when you're saving, I want you to treat something that's being edited that was previously, that's previously in the list different than if you're doing something new. So we kind of need to do something both in the saving, so it treats it differently in the save. It doesn't add it because we don't want a new element and we want something to be replaced. So you need to figure out do a, if a conditional thing here that says, hey, if I'm saving something, updating it, then add it, push, um, replace it in the list. But if I'm not editing or updating, then push it. So here it seems like if we do an if, um, you know, this is an update, right? If updating or editing, for example, if editing is true, then um, it seems that I want to else. So it seems as though um, that's what I want. If um, I'm, I'm not updating, then push it. But if I am updating to a list, then find the current place in the thing and look at the edit location, edit index, and set it equals to this new thing. Okay? So it seems that that's, that's something like that is what I want to really do. Is If I'm editing and save this call while I'm editing, then I want to create this new, this new to, this to do that have an updated description on progress, I want it to replace the one that's in that edit location. Else I want to add it to the list if I'm thing. But it seems that if I'm saying that though I'm editing, after I edit, I don't want the next time somebody save for the same path to be taken. So I should set editing to false, right? So editing is equals to false once I've updated something that's been edited. Well, this value, editing and uh, edit index, I don't actually have them. So I need to create them somewhere here so they can be available across the function. So variable editing is equals to false. Go by default. And I don't start off. The first thing I save, you know, if I don't have anything in my list, the first thing is not going to be something that's edited. It's something I need to save. So I need that to be false. So this path here is taken where it pushes it onto the list. And then... Uh, if I edit index, it doesn't matter if it's zero because since I'm not going to take this path, um, it, it doesn't matter. And so what I need to do is to make sure that this edit index is updated to the correct index when I do an edit. So if I do an edit, I need to say that, oh, hey, you know what? This edit index, well, first of all, I'm going to be editing, so I need to set that to true. And then the edit index needs to be updated to whatever index is. And so uh, that looks like, um, you know, like what we want. And if we do that, when we click edit, the edit button is called, and then we update this thing, and then we click save, like the right thing is going to happen, and then the value is going to get reset proper, appropriately, right? Like, so editing would be false, and it wouldn't matter because this is going to change. And so um, one other thing is uh no i think that's pretty much it we don't have to do anything else let's test it and see i think that's pretty much it so let's see if we get the right behavior now so we refresh oh i'm tired of the place of this default one being there 
So let's take that out. Let's take that out. That is just for when we we're testing, getting stuff going. We had this row with this guy. So we're going to make this empty for now because we want our application to start off with nothing being in the, in the list. Because we can't even do anything on that. Anyway, we can edit it or anything, right? Because it's not in our to-do list. And so, all right, let's see. Uh, we can take out this placeholder too, actually. Uh, let's take out this value. Not that placeholder, this sample thing. And so let's do that. Okay, so it's gone already. Just refresh to make sure. So I'm gonna say, get milk. And then I say, not started, save. And then I wanna edit this because I started the task and I'm gonna say, in progress, I wanna do save. I could see it updated to a thing. Um, and then I want to edit it again. We know the delete work. We didn't change delete. And I want to say get whole milk. And, um, you know, completed. And it says save. And so now this is changed to get whole milk and blah, blah, blah. And notice a new thing wasn't added because of the little logic that we had it to make sure that we, we differentiate between adding something to the to do's and so on. And let's say, I and so what I was talking about before is so let's say I click edit. Um, and now I said, you know, I don't really want to do that. What I really want to do is add something new. So it'd be nice to have a button here called like clear. So it resets thing a bit. And that way, um, you know, uh, I can just clear it and then go ahead and add something new. So um, right now, since I've clicked edit, even if I want something new, I make a change. If I save that, it actually is going to change this. So I really do want to clear. So let's go back up and do that. Oh, before we do, let's save where we are right now and say, oh, what we have going now is edit working. So still work in progress. You know, this stuff is not complete yet. Edit button working. Our stuff, our entire thing is not really together yet. And so we're gonna add a, besides the save button, we're gonna add um, another button we're gonna call um, clear. And we call it clear. And there's something I didn't mention before, you probably didn't notice, but I'll bring it up just now. And so we don't need any ID and anything on these buttons because we're really not hooking up anything to them. We don't need to reference them in code. So we should take out the ID off of them. We're not referencing them in code. We can say the same thing about this, but the reason I put this on there is because I wanted to show you some styling at one time, but I don't think, I think we'll stay away from styling. So I'll, but I'll leave that there. I'll put on the, the, the div that manages that table. And so we want to do, oh, we want to clear, um, clear input. So let's do a card clear inputs. Okay. And we're gonna pass the event there so we can make sure that it doesn't try and do a submit. That's because these buttons are inside of a form. When you look at the other buttons that are part of the, the table, they're not inside of a form, so we didn't have to pass the event to clear them. Normally what people would do, instead of putting a button inside the table, they'd put probably like a, a link or something, and it pretty much would work the same way, but I'll leave a button, okay? Um, I like how they look in the table. Um, no, not right now, but. All right, so we, we have this one more method that we have to write call function clear inputs. Doesn't take, uh, oh, it takes event, sorry, EVT, let's keep it consistent, I guess. Um, and what do we want? We want it to EVT that prevent the fault action, which is a submission. And then we kind of, we wanted to do what we we're doing up here, right? Which is um, after you save something, you, after you save something, not get the value, we don't want to save it. We don't want to create a to-do with it. We don't want to create, you, you want to, for that description element, you want to clear it out. And for the progress element, you want to set it back to a thing. So that's what clear input would do for you. Okay. The other thing that clear input should do is if we start editing, it should clear the editing, should set editing equals to false, right? Equals to false. So that um, if we did 
start editing something and we didn't, we didn't want to continue editing, we could click clear. And now the next time we do save something, it would take the right path of adding it, the right path in the code of adding it instead of doing the editing. So those three things, just clear inputs you need to do. Uh, we could probably call it reset form, because that's probably more uh, re reset form. We could just call it reset. Um, so even though the text of the thing is going to be clear, we're going to call, <coughs> excuse me, allergies. Uh, reset. All right. Um, so that's that. Um, excuse me, sorry. Uh, well, since we have this reset method that we were calling that, you know, can take care of this, we don't want to do this in two places, just in case, uh, you know, we want, since we, we can do that, if we have to add more elements and other stuff that needs clearing up and resetting, why not just do it in one place? So after we've, you know, got the value that we want and so on, and we decide if we're going to edit it or save it or whatever, um, after we've uploaded, we can do it before we update the listing because um, updating the listing is separate from clearing the form. Uh, just in case our listing is really long, it might spend a long time updating the listing and then the user would still see the input as having things. So let's do reset first. And um, and of course, we set our reset takes event also. So we could just pass through the same um, event um, to reset. And, you know, we can call, so we can call reset from inside our safe to do. And we can also call it from this button. All we're doing is reusing the method that we used, we wrote for clearing out stuff. We're using it in two places. Now let's save and retest everything and make sure that's how it works. And so refresh. And of course, there's no default up here. So we can say um, do task. We can do task one. And we say not started, save. We can say task two in progress, save. Task three, completed, save. And notice how oh, this is reset, this is clear. So that's all good. Let's delete task two, make sure that's not broken. So we delete it, it's gone. Let's edit task one and make it um, task four and to make sure that's thing. And then say it, oh, it's in progress. And then we save and that's work and it's replaced in the correct location. Let's edit task three and then change our mind about it. So we do some changes, blah, blah. Then we change our mind. We don't really want to actually save anything. So we clear it. Ah, but look at that. It cleared out the entire, um, the entire list. Ah, oh, good thing we did some testing. That's not what we want at all. And that's because it seems that when we do clear, clear is doing that refresh. And that is bad. So, Where's reset? Let's go back here and click reset. It seems when we did edit, it didn't do that. So it means that our, our clear button here on click is equals to reset. Oh, it's called a reset. Uh, I wonder, there's a reset um, method that's provided by the form. I wonder if it's that's, uh, so that might be why. All right, so we don't want to call the form reset because that's clear out all our data. So let's put this back as um, clear inputs because what's happening is calling the reset method provided by the form and that's not what we want. <laughs> uh, so let's do clear inputs. And of course we have to go back up here and say uh, clear inputs. So let's do a save and let's retry that again. Make sure everything is already see. That's why you got to test. So task is just one, save, task two, in progress, task three, completed, save. We can delete task two. We can edit task one and we can make it task four. And we can say it's completed and we could do a save and it does the right thing and we could edit it again we could make it task one again with some more thing or we could say it's in progress for whatever reason and can we have more work to do 
and that is accurate and correctly. And let's edit this one to make sure it goes now. We have to have some weird bugs with when you edit stuff at the beginning of the list. And so, yep, there we go. And we say save, and this guy get updated accordingly. Now, we want to say edit, and then we want to click clear, and it works correctly now, right? So when we use reset, it was calling the reset provided by the browser, as opposed to our code that was causing the whole thing to reset. So there's a reset provided by the browser. When I typed it, I didn't really think about it until after I saw what it did, then I remember that I thought there's a reset. So, okay, so now it works fine. Oh, you know it works fine because we hit clear just now, it removed this, right, we hit clear. Um, well, we hit clear after we did a head it, bam. And now if I type something new, task two, it should add it instead of inserting it somewhere. And that's exactly what it did, it added. Even though I did edit, remember we have the logic that says if you click edit, now when you click save, things could take a different path of just updating. But because I put the clear method, it's gonna reset the editing thing to false. And so now when I add something, guess what? It gets added, bam. And so delete, delete, and delete, and delete. So this is our to-do list and it's fairly functional. It's ugly, but it's functional. It does everything we kind of want. We could put it on our website. We can share it with our friends and just, you know, manage our to-dos. So congratulations, we've done to-do and we've done it the hard way. Next, we're gonna look at doing things slightly easier, okay? And um, what we're gonna do is jump into just doing this to-do list um, in, um, we might just, at first I wanted to show you how to use jQuery to make things a little bit easier, but I think I'll just go straight to using Angular so we don't spend too much time on this bonus project. We can certainly have many more bonus projects. And so we have to get back, I have to get back to doing more videos in the regular path of the tutorial anyway. So zoom in so, so much time in a day. So yeah, thanks for joining me and I'm gonna end this one here. It's probably really long too, but congratulations. Here's your to-do, it's complete, it's kind of working. The only thing to do now is let's do this in Angular and show how things could be a lot, lot easier. In, in Angular. We took about two videos to get, or three videos to get to this part and about an hour and something of work. And we're gonna redo the entire thing pretty much, except, you know, not having to redo this form and stuff like that, we're gonna reuse the form. But we're gonna start off from where we were um, in the beginning, um, from the first video where I already had this form and we'll kind of show how you can just use Angular. Or maybe we'll do it that way or we'll just show how you take out stuff. Well, either way, we'll see how it gets done. All right, see you. I'm excited to show you how Angular makes our lives just so, so much easier. All right, take care. Bye.